All right. 11.1, talking about square roots. Okay, we have listed in our notes, that's what you just wrote down, these are the perfect squares from 1 to 20, and then... Thirty to one hundred. Okay. Now I would highly suggest that you memorize these. I don't know. I may have a quiz over them next week during the six-week exam week, uh, but I would highly suggest that you memorize these. One through twelve, you should already know just from knowing your multiplication tables. Okay. We know that twelve times twelve is one forty-four from our multiplication tables. We know that eleven times eleven is one twenty-one from our multiplication tables. The 13 through 20 or the 13 through 19 are the ones that you don't see a lot of that you probably don't have memorized, okay? I would highly suggest that you memorize those, okay? If nothing else, you're going to need them for the test that you will have over this material, okay? And you're not going to have time to have to, you know, oh, I think that's 16 times 16, and then you have to write it down, okay? Now, when we're talking about the square roots, When we're talking about the square root of a number, okay, for example, square root of 64, okay, the square root of 64 is what they're asking for is they're asking for what number times itself would equal 64. Now, that one we should know. It's in the middle of our multiplication tables. So what is the square root of 64? 8. Now, what people where people tend to make their mistakes is when we get into larger numbers, then they start all of a sudden dividing it by 2, and that's the square root. Okay? Like, for example, if I ask you what the square root of 1,000 is, some of you would say, oh, it's 500. No, it's not 500. Because 500 times 500, okay, would be 250,000. Okay, so it's not 500 times 500. Okay, you're not dividing it by 2. You're not cutting it in half. You're simply finding out what factor times itself equals the number you've been given. So we said that the square root of 64 is what? Okay, there's another square root of 64. Anybody know the other square root of 64? And right now you're going through your heads and you're going, what other number of times that equals 64? Okay, so you've said that it's 8, which is correct, but there's another one, and the other one is negative 8, because if I take negative 8 times negative 8, that's going to be a positive 64, because when we multiply two negatives together, it equals a positive. So there are parts of your homework where they're going to ask you to list the two square roots of the numbers. If they ask you to list the two square roots of the numbers, you must give us the positive and the negative square root. If they just do this, they say the square root with the square root sign, which this is called square root sign or radical sign. The higher up you get in math, the more they'll call it the radical sign. Okay?
Now, if they just give you the radical or square root sign and put a number underneath it, then they only want the positive or principal square root. Okay, which is 11. Now, you don't put it on top of the, the square root sign like you do a division problem. You can either write it as the square root of 121 and put 11 underneath it and circle it. Or you can say the square root of 121 and put an equal sign beside it and do it that way. Yes. Why would I say not to put it above it if I wasn't going to count it wrong? Say, Sean? Uh, how would they word it if they went in a circle with like the negative and positive and probably the following? Brandon, were you paying attention when that question was answered? At least you're being honest. Quaid, you were? No, when his question was answered. I said earlier that if they tell you to list the two square roots of the number, then you put both the positive and negative square roots. That exact sentence came out of my mouth three minutes ago. Yeah. I lied. I really didn't say that, so now you didn't hear it, so... All right, now, so let's say they give me the square root of 625, okay? Now, to find the square root of 625 is a little bit more difficult. You obviously will not have that memorized. I'm not asking you to memorize that, okay? But what we do know is this. We do know that the square root of 625 falls between the square root of 400 and the square root of 900. Well, by our little chart we copied down, what is the square root of 400? 20. And what is the square root of 900? 30. So, the square root of 625 has to fall between those two. Okay, so the square root of 625 has to fall between those two. Now, I can figure out what it is. It's easier to figure it out because of what the number ends in. The number ends, or the last digit of the number, is a 5. Well... We've already established that the square root of 625 is between is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. We know it's got to be one of those numbers because it's a perfect square. So since we found that it falls between 20 and 30, it has to be one of those numbers there. Now... The only number that when you multiply by itself that ends in a 5 is 25. Okay? So the square root of 25 is 25. Because, look, the square root of 20, or 21 times 21 is going to be 1, 2, 0, 2, 4, 441, because it ends in a 1, because the two things you're multiplying is, tw is 1. So, this number will end in a 2. This number will end in a 9. This number will end in a 6. This number will end in a 5. This number will end in a 6. 
27 times 27 will end in a 9. 28 times 28 will end in a 4. And 29 times 29 will end in a 1. Okay. No, oh, excuse me, that's that first second one's wrong. That's a four. Two times two would be four. Okay, so you will notice there and there are the same same numbers that they end in. Okay, so let me give you another one. Let's say we had 729, the square root. Square root of 729. Well, just like the last one, we know that this falls between the square root of 400 and the square root of 900. Okay, so we know then that it has to be either one of those numbers. But we've already said that 21 times 21 and 29 times 29 end in a 1, correct? So we know it can't be those two because our answer up here ends in a 9. We know that 22 times 22 is going to end in a 4. We know that 28 times 28 is going to end in a 4, so it can't be one of those. We know that 24 times 24 ends in a 6. 26 times 26 ends in a 6. We know that 25 times 25 ends in a 5. Nope, I didn't skip anything. Thank you for trying to teach the class since you're in seventh grade. So, those two are the left. Those are the two that are left. Those are also the only two numbers that when you multiply them together will end in a nine. Now, what we have to look at is, is 729 closer to 400 or closer to 900? closer to 900. So which number, 23 times 23 or 27 times 27, is it going to be? 27 times 27. So the square root of 729 is 27. Now, they have said in the directions, they've actually said this, find two square roots of the number, okay? And they have given you, this is number 15. And they just give you the number 729. They don't even give you the square root sign, okay? They still want the square root because it says so in the directions. So that means negative 27 and 27 is your answer. Because you got to give them both square roots. Okay, so negative twenty seven and twenty seven. That would be the answer to number 15. Okay, now, when they do this, this is number 25. That says the negative square root of 676. So what is the square root of 676? Uh, 
Okay. Some of you have said 24. Some of you said 26. This is the one, okay, this is the one that you have to multiply it out and see. Because 24, because that's real close to the middle. So I want you to multiply 24 times 24. And I want you to multiply 26 times 26. So who has 24 times 24? Quaid? What? No. No. Tayshawn? What? No, what is 24 times 24? I'm looking for 24 times 24. 570? 576. What is 26 times 26? Cameron. 676. So is 24 times 24 really 576? Is it? Okay. All right. I wouldn't think they were just 100 off. It seems like they'd have to be a little bit more off. But All right. So our answer then, our answer to the problem is negative 26. Because this negative sign out in front, I have to bring down into my answer. Now, this, that right there, the square root of negative 676, that is not possible. Somebody tell me why that would not be possible. What do you think would be the reason why you can't have the square root of a negative number? I, uh, Levi? Because you can't multiply Correct. The only way we can get a negative is if we take one negative and one positive and multiply them together. Well, the square root says that I'm taking the number times itself. So if I take positive 26, I have to multiply it by positive 26. If I take negative 26, I have to multiply it by negative 26. So therefore, there's no way to come up with a negative square root. However, you can have it on the outside because what that says is they want to know the opposite of the square root of 76, 676, which means the opposite of the square root of 676 is is negative 676, okay? The other way that you will see them is this way. Like that. Plus or minus the square root of 676. Okay? Well, the answer to that is plus or minus 26. So whatever sign is in front, you must bring it into the answer. If there's no sign in front, then you don't, you know, then you have no sign. Just like square root of 676 is 26. That's your answer. Okay, there's not a sign in front, so I don't bring it down. Now, let's look at the next part of problems. Okay, so the opposite of the square root of 7x plus 100, where x is equal to 3. So I have to plug this in. So that would be 7 times 3 would be 21. So that would be the opposite 
of the square root of 121. And so that would be negative 11. What do you mean all of them? Like what? We will have some problems that are like that in the homework, yes. Brandon? Brandon? Sit up. Wipe the slobber from your mouth. Preston. All right. I want you to do this one on your own. When you have the answer to that one, raise your hand. You should have this. Should have been 60 minus 3 times 4 plus 1. Order of operation says I have to do the multiplication or division first. So that's 60 minus 12. One more, and you have two lunch detentions. Plus one. 60 minus 12 is what we do next. That is 48 plus one. 48 plus one is 49. Square root of 49 is seven. Now, if you put this as the answer of square root of 49, that is wrong. It is not 7 squared. It is 7. Okay, so please don't put the square sign with your square root. Okay. Now, what you're going to do for homework tomorrow during class Tomorrow we have the band trip. I will probably be back by then, okay? But if I don't, you will have a sub. Uh, one of my baseball coaches is subbing tomorrow, and you're going to do these problems. And I will instruct him if you act like this that there will be a ton of homework. So 12 through 28, 32 through 37. You will do them by yourself during class tomorrow. They will be due on Friday. I believe all the... Is anybody here in band? I don't think so. Okay. 